There's so many parts to producing a book. And how long does each step take anyways? Well, don't worry, I've come to the rescue and put together a comprehensive self-publishing checklist just for you. Hello everyone and welcome to Pen to Paper. I'm Leah Lindemann, author of the Canadian Reminiscence series. And here on Pen to Paper on Wednesdays, we talk everything about writing books, writing craft, producing, marketing, and today we're going to talk about the self-publishing checklist that you need for when you publish your own book. So what I've done is I've created an actual PDF resource right here. And in the description of this episode, there is a link where you can get your own copy of this PDF. But for now, this whole episode is I'm just going to be going through each of the steps and just telling you a little bit about each of them and how long on average it takes to do them. Now, I'm not going to put any hardcore time numbers on here. I have just put how long it can take up to. Don't feel that because you're doing it faster than I am or more slowly than I am, it doesn't make you any less of a writer or any less of a producer of books. Everybody's time is their own and it's up to you to figure out what is the best time for you in order to accomplish these steps. But I've just put next to this step the approximate amount of time it took me. Now, I tend to take things very slowly because I am a mother of six children and I have a lot of things on my plate, but I've even added on extra time to the time it usually takes me. So you can be rest assured that most of these times give you an ample amount of time to actually fulfill the step. But let's start with the first and most important step, which is writing the first draft without stopping. And when I say without stopping, I mean no editing on the way because it is very tempting to continually go back through what you've written, written and change it and fix it up. And then you never get to writing the book or it takes you way longer to actually write in the book than it has to. So do it without stopping. Now, it can take up to a month to three months. November is the month for NaNoWriMo, so perhaps you're gearing up for that and you may be able to write those 50,000 words in one month. And if you can, that's great for you. Unfortunately for me, I believe the quickest I wrote a book was three months. This book that I'm on now has taken quite a bit longer. But again, as I said, it's my decision. I've put my own deadline and I know when it's the right time to extend that deadline or when it's the right time to actually hit the deadline. And that is just an example of how long it can take. Next, we have two rounds of big picture edits. These are technically called develop developmental edit. <laughs> developmental edits. And they are big picture edits, making sure that there's no major plot holes in your work, that your characters line up with how they're supposed to act, that everything makes sense. Now, I say more than one just because you don't always catch everything the first time. So I believe it's very good to go through it a second time. And each edit can take up to one to two months each. I put down up to a month each. It just depends, again, on how much time you're willing to give to where the development, developmental edit. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time saying this word tonight. <laughs> Next, you're going to want to do two rounds of sentence structure edits. And this kind of deals more with making sure that your sentences are varied. It's not always subject, verb, object, that there are, that your sentences flow well together, your paragraphs are made up correctly. It's a little bit more technical than the content type of editing. And again, up to a month each, and I would definitely do two rounds of this as well, just to make sure you're really catching those mistakes. And on number four, we have one round of grammar edit. 
also taking up to a month. I say do one round of grammar edit because you don't want to be sending your manuscript to the next step without going through this step because trust me, those people in the next step will appreciate that you've gone through the grammar and made it comprehensible. I know there are those books out these days with no periods and no commas and I mean, maybe that could work. <laughs> I believe that it's, I mean, they must do it intentionally and there must be some sort of intention behind that structure. So if you're doing that, then definitely put intention behind it. But otherwise, you're going to want to make sure that your manuscript is in a readable state. Before you send it down to the next step, which is step number six is, oh, sorry, I'm forgetting step number five, which is getting your five beta readers and or editor to read your manuscript. When I say this, give two months. Now, I'm not too sure because I haven't worked with an editor before. I'm not too sure how long an editor takes to edit a manuscript. I guess that could vary. With beta readers, first of all, before you get to this step, perhaps while you're doing your grammar edit, make sure that you have your people lined up before you ask and send it to them because you're gonna finish your grammar edit and then you're gonna start asking people. And then they might say no, or I can't read it right now. And then it's going to take longer to go through the process of getting your book out the door and onto the shelves and into the marketplace. So while you're doing your grammar edit, start approaching those people who you think would be a great fit to read your book, give it a critical analysis of how it's great, how it could be better. And also, you can let them know ahead of time, I'm doing my grammar edit, in about a month it will be done, can you have it, can you be ready to read it in about a month's time, and give them up to two months. People are busy, they have lives, if this is not their everyday job, then they're gonna want that time to really be able to sit down with your manuscript and, and give it the attention that they wanna give it and the attention that it needs. So. Make sure you line up everything before you get to step five. Now we're gonna to go to step six, and this is fun to do while your beta readers are reading or your editor. You know, you gotta take your steps and put them a little bit together, layer them so you can get this done in an efficient and speedy way, but not too speedy because you don't wanna mess up any steps and you don't wanna miss any steps. Okay, so while you're getting your beta readers to read this or your editor to take a look at it, you can get your cover art done. Now, there's two different ways of doing it. Maybe there's more than two different ways. You can get a cover designer and artist to do the artwork for you. You could do what I did and use live models. Whatever your choice is, you can get your cover designer to do the work during this time. And they also have to do, remember, a cover. If you're going to be publishing as a paperback, you're going to need the front, the back, and the spine, which is very important. And while they're doing this work, you can write your blurb, which is the part in the back that talks about your book and what it's about and that part that entices the reader to want to actually pick up the book and buy it. So that's the time you can write it. And you also want to get a headshot and write your author bio. And this is all things that you can layer together. Now the next step, once you've received word back from your beta readers and your editor and they've given you your, their thoughts on your book, then you're going to want to do another edit or two. I highly suggest two, maybe even three. Don't go past three because then you might just be obsessed and you might have a hard time letting go, which some authors really have an issue with. But definitely take the criticism you've received and then fix what you need to fix. Polish that manuscript up till it's shining like a beautiful diamond. Step eight is writing your title, copyright, dedication, and acknowledgements pages. Now these might not take up as much time as the rest of the steps, probably not. Title page you can whip up in 30 seconds, so can you do your dedication page, although it might take you longer to figure out who you're dedicating your book to. 
Then you have your copyright page, which does not take very long. And your acknowledgements pages is definitely going to be the one that takes the longest. You could probably write that in a day or two, but again, completely up to you and the time that you're willing to give to it and the time that you have. Now, some books you might see an introduction or an author's note or discussion questions. Usually an author's note and discussion questions will go at the end. An introduction is usually saved for fiction books. Uh, sorry, oh boy, nonfiction books. You probably are not going to be putting an introduction in front of a fantasy book. <laughs> so know your genre, understand what those books look like, even in terms of the extra pages that are part of the book, and, and then work according to that. You want to know your genre very well so that your book is competable within the marketplace. And then uh, the step that I hate the most, or at least the first part of the step, which is formatting your book, Ooh, just gives me, okay, it doesn't give me the creeps. It just so, so incredibly frustrating. I'll pin that and save it for another time. And then while you're getting your book formatted, you can also request an ISBN. But let me go back to formatting. You can format it yourself or you can hire a formatter. I'm not too sure how much time it takes for a formatter to do that. I'm guessing two weeks would be enough time. That's how much time it takes me to do it. And that's with um, me doing everything else in my life. So, and then I always get my wonderful friend to just touch it up and make sure everything's correct and the way it's supposed to be. And you can also request your ISBN at the same time. Now, I don't believe it's necessary for you to request an ISBN, or at least not in Canada. I do go through the government of Canada and it takes about a day or two for me to get it, but I put here a week next to this step. Amazon gives you an ASIN number uh, in the stead of ISBN, but I guess it just depends on where you live and what country. So you're just going to want to look into that. What is the requirement of an ISBN in producing a book in your country? Now, the second to last step is uploading your ebook into draft2digital.com to cover all the ebook marketplaces. This website is amazing. You get your ebook, as I said, in all platforms including the ones that libraries go to to get their ebooks so it makes it accessible in every institution and then the last one which is probably oh i'm gonna go back to draft to digital for a second that takes a few days but i just put a week next to the step and again I'm putting a week next to this step, which is the most important, not important, but most exciting step, I guess, which is publishing your book as a paperback on Amazon and Ingram Spark. Now, if you're just using the online proofs to make sure that your book is okay, this doesn't take very long. You can look at it online and then say, yep, it's good to go, let's print and order those copies so you can start selling them. However, if you go through a physical copy, you need to buffer that time in um, knowing that it's going to take time for the company to ship the physical proof to you and then you're going to have to go through it and then what if it's not right? What if there's mistakes? Well, then you're going to have to change them and they're going to have to ship you another physical proof. So. If you decide to go with a physical proof, it's definitely going to take a lot longer, but you know that it's going to be well worth it in the end. So that is my comprehensive self-publishing checklist for you all. As I said, this PDF is going to be in the episode description. So take a look out for that. Get your email with the download and you can use it. Um, it, they're just check boxes, so you just check them off as you go about doing them. And I'm just so excited to have given you guys this resource. So I hope that this episode has been incredibly helpful to you, and I will see you next week.